Hello, welcome to the Quality of Kipron. My name is Peter Tate and today we'll be looking at the new pavement manager in V15. Cylinder design pavement. The old pavement manager has been moved under this menu here. Uh, still able to be used in V15, however. So we'll look at the pavement manager. The main improvement in the pavement manager here is the uh, ability to have unlimited number of layers. Uh, so uh, the naming convention is still very much the same as what it is in uh, version 14. So again, this syntax here makes up our naming convention for our models. So we've got pavement mesh and pavement mesh strings. And then the, uh, the name of the reference string is usually added uh, when, once you run the snippets inside the MTF file. We've added in a, a new uh, attribute tree name. Um, so if we look at the attribute that we set for our pavement. Again, we set the pavement type, uh, layer description information, depth, number of layer, also the lowest, highest change, the length of the, of the tri mesh, and also the surface area and volume uh, over that length. Uh, so we specified that as surface area per length and volume per length. So this is user definable. So if you enter whatever you want, but for the output to IFC, I have to just enter the, the tree structure uh, group heading of BIM and everything underneath there comes out as uh, tabs in IFC. So with the advent of the multiple layers or as many layers as you want, uh, the naming of those particular layers or trimeshes and uh, the, any sort of description uh, became a bit of a task. Uh, so we've supplied now a user layer file. So if we open that up, it's a fairly easy uh, file. At the moment it's a text editor. Uh, on the left hand side is the name of your trimesh. Uh, the second column is the is a description of that uh, trimesh. And then here how it's going to sit inside the file. So if you go road slash like that, forward slash that creates a, a uh, group. So under road I've got concrete pavements, asphalt surfaces and binders and curbs and so forth. That file will be available in your library. Every layer in, inside the pavement manager can have attributes attached to it now. So in that case here I'm using uh, of our choices from default and so forth, I'm using MetaConnects. It's on the utilities MetaConnects file. If I have a look at that job details, we can supply that inside our library. So it's just a small file just to give you an idea what you can do. Um, so obviously for, you can have choices uh, for staging, you can have a district name, a region number, road number. Uh, so totally customizable. Uh, again, under assets, you could possibly have something like a description, a uni class number, a, uh, a discipline code, status, owner, and so forth. Um, and they're applied to every single layer that you define it on. So under my um, pavement layer, again, now that we're in a grid, you can go select on here, right mouse button, and duplicate. So our, our layer definitions are in this column here. These two columns are for uh, indication for information only. Um, so they tell you how many layers are uh, active in that layer description and the overall depth. So when I select the um, uh, pavement and I go left button on the uh, description, that uh, layer name file is then activated and you can then select a standard name uh, trimesh and description from a list. You then specify a depth. There's some attributes that you can set for each one of the uh, layers. We still have the inner and outer offset for the, for the pavement but we have a, a slope now available for every single layer uh, inside your pavement style. Um, if you don't have anything in here, uh, the default on the uh, snippet will be used. Then you've got colors, colors, um, uh, tins, uh, whether it's active or not. Um, so in that case here, though, I've turned these two off just to show that they're a red color when they're not active. So you are at this stage here dependent on a standard naming convention or standard names. If you decide that you didn't want that, you can simply just come back in here and turn that off. So when you go back into the pavement again, so when you go left button here, it's just a simple entry. It's just a matter of going back and turning it on and off. So the curbs uh, um, operate similarly. You can have a as the left button here and go down to your standard naming convention for curbs. Uh, you can set ones up for barrier curves, rollover, medians, uh, anything you want. Um, what's important in the curb profile is the uh, depth below the curb. 
and also the offset behind and uh, the colors make the, uh, are, are up to you. Um, you can add uh, attributes to every single layer or, or, or curve type. And the same goes for verges. So you've got a description, a name, uh, attributes, and any colors that are available there. Now look at one of our rows that using the new Pavement Manager. Obviously what comes with the new Pavement Manager are new snippets. So the, the new snippet is uh, so there's only one for curb, uh, so it does the whole curb profile and also curb only. Uh, so we try to get the same name extension, try pavement and from attributes, and it's just got this uh, new curb feature inside here. So here we're actually uh, changing our uh, pavement to a different style, PT01, PT03, still using the same curb shape, um, but we're just changing the pavement as we, as we go down the road. So basically the uh, snippet looks very similar to what it does inside version 14. Um, the good part about this is only the styles that you have active uh, shown in the, in the list, and the same goes for the curb style. Um, we still require the, the uh, identifier uh, for when you use the snippet. Um, this goes into the naming convention as well, um, as not only for any uh, name grades, that sort of stuff later on that you may be using, uh, but uh, the name for HBSB on the left-hand side and that descriptor A and then also the, the uh, alignment string that it belongs to. You'll notice in this here that uh, for this particular uh, new snippet, uh, we only have to ask you for the start and back of the curve profile. So here we're looking at a curve profile and we're changing from a, ba a barrier uh, to a, a median curve. So you only have to specify these two, stop uh, at the lip of curve in the back, and any strings in between are then copied to make up the curve shape. Um, so just allows you that, that sort of flexibility and um, uh, to be able to apply those curves at, at any stage. So again, it's looking at the same sort of things that the, the version 14 does. It asks you for strings to, to start your payment at um, and then uh, define where those strings are. Um, so for something like that, it might be like a widening type job. So if we pick a different profile and apply there, we might have to end up with it with a pavement uh, profile like this. Um, and some of those widening ones, you may end up having to have, uh, re require uh, steps and things like that. So with the new pavement manager, again, you can have a different slope for every single layer uh, here and also at the end and also the particular steps inside as well. Um, so it um, uh, allows you quite a bit of flexibility. If I go back to my hinge here and apply. Um, so the same process um, applies for the left and the right uh, side of the road. Um, so if I go to a intersection type option where I particularly may have an intersection and I go back to my, got a small modifier here that's just turning off what the, the back of the curve for you. So when I go apply, um, it will automatically look at the at the strings uh, for the does the back of curb exist. If the back of curb doesn't exist, it will then turn around and create the pavement out to the lip of curb. Um, if we had to modify to say take away the lip of curb as well, then you'd end up with no pavement at all in this section here. So it's quite handy in in in, in that respect. <clears throat> there are times with um, the pavement and, and uh, picking up the actual styles that you uh, may want to create the subgrade tin surface and um, maybe not even want to be able to create the, the uh, tri meshes at this stage. So we have allowed you a, or created a, a snippet. So if I turn off the, the pavement for that side of the road and apply that. Um, so we want to be able to now create the subgrade tin surface uh, based on our, our um, pavement profile uh, in relation to the the depth of my pavement, the type of curb I'm going to do, and so forth, uh, but I want to be able to create the subgrade tin. So we've added in this new snippet. In this case, it's called 12D Curb Subgrade Tin. So it's pretty straightforward. It asks you similar questions as if it's going to create the the uh, tri mesh, but it will only create a tin surface for the bottom. Um, so again, it asks you for a uh, a uh, pavement style, curb style. It asks you for a user defined layer name in this case. Uh, and then the, the strings that you wish to stop and start at. There is a copy mode at the end of the curb. Uh, so when it works out where this po point is here, it allows you to either just copy up and uh, to the back of the curb 
or copy to a link or copy all the way to the end of the strings. This is what this copy mode is all about. Um, so if I apply that, it'll then turn around and create the, the tin surface for you. So you can see in your view over here, uh, the tin surface and uh, in our uh, view here. Um, so uh, again, has a uh, the copy, copy to end, copy to link and none. So again, in this sort of uh, option here, if I turn on the other one, which is the next uh, 25 odd meters down the road, it has in a different um, uh, profile for my uh, triangulation. So again, then it then steps. So the these simply can be used at uh, any time. Um, the if you depending on what layer you're going to use, then the create subgrade tin uh, does all the other work. Um, so you specify the layer that you you, you um, uh, entered and also some naming convention for your strings and tin and so forth. There's also a little uh, five mil vertical wall uh, value there for uh, the uh, the machine control. So if I go to my right side now and I turn off my pavement and add back on my tin and recalc again, um, then you'll see the actual surface here. So it's a really good feature. Um, and then uh, again, uh, be able to create the subgrade tin based on your uh, pavement style. So you can change the pavement style as you go down a road and all the different copy options uh, and not necessarily produce the tri mesh straight away. So the curb snippet can also be utilized in curb returns or even a cul-de-sac similar to this. So on the left hand side of the road here, because it's what the cold sack's about, is picking up the new pavement curb return. Um, so again, it still picks the um, the hinge string, a little bit of curb and so forth, but it just says you know, use curb only. Um, so uh, it has the option to uh, change the slope under the curb, just like the normal options do. What we've also got here is a, a verge option, which utilizes that verge part of the pavement manager that we showed before. So it asks you again for the curb pavement, uh, the actual uh, curb definition, so it knows about all these strings, and also then a verge string over the side over here. Normally it would be, say, a, a footpath string or something like that. Um, so it'll then go and create the, the trimester shape for you for the verge. And again, all the attributes are available uh, on all the trimesters created inside the snippets. Um, so again, under pavement, uh, we have all the information. This one tells you what the adjacent curve was, uh, the layer name, and again, the volumes and surface areas for that particular length. For a rural type road or a freeway type job here, uh, we still have uh, new snippets for those, but traditionally in version 14, we would have had a uh, combination of pavement only and uh, pavement batter. Uh, so they've been combined to uh, just form one snippet, try pavement new from attributes. So in this case here, it's going from the reference string out to my edge string here. Um, so this one has uh, two lanes and, and a change in crossfall. Um, so you can use the uh, link copy mode. In that case, it's going from start to end all links uh, as uh, different to uh, only start and end. So it depends on what you want to do. Um, you can have individual ones for each lane uh, or you can then copy from one straight across to the other. Uh, are similar things what the version 14 did, reference string uh, and uh, so forth. Uh, and um, there's not much difference other than the fact that it can uh, copy across and have multiple layers. So for the same for the other one, um, it has a, a, a different layer change here. So it's copying from there to there, but there was a totally different um, uh, depth pavement uh, in that case. And again, I specified the batter. Um, so with this new option, you, you have to, uh, for this grade here, for your batter, you have to specify a name grade. Um, it doesn't ask you for links and all the sorts of things that the other ones did inside version 14. What's at the um, side of this job um, is we have the, the bottom pavement created. Uh, it's got this string here is called uh, SMZ. You see the same naming convention, uh, uh, layer six. Uh, it's called Z, left-hand side, 
uh, a one descriptor and it belongs to that particular road um, so it's on um, the uh, layer 6a1 which is this point here so we want to also then do the pavement from that point down to a design string so there's different strings on different layers so we're using the only start and end option rather than the copy command and uh, it, it, it has a, a similar process everything you can have all the um, the uh, uh, different depths and, and the uh, options for the bottom surface mode but uh, the point is that it, it's using two different points on two different layers so again you've got the same sort of thing on the on the other side of the road um, and uh, so if we turn off our tri mesh we go apply so as we did with the curb um, we've introduced a uh, a batter subgrade snippet which will again form the bottom of the tri mesh for you uh, uh, rather than having to uh, the bottom of the, uh, the bottom a tin for the subgrade uh, rather than having to go and create all the tri mesh all the time um, so again it's very similar uh, but it talks about a batter uh, so because it's a batter um, it asks you questions uh, like whether you want to daylight out to the to the surface here so it's saying yes I want to daylight out so it's going to daylight from this point out to here and then it's also going to copy to an end so it has a uh, copy to end or none similar to what the curb had before so if I turn this one on as well and apply um, so it allows you this sort of flexibility um, so uh, again you can create the the subgrade tin all the way across the road um, and again this 12d create subgrade tin that's the one that defines what layer you're using and also the strings that, and uh, uh, all the model names that you want for the strings and the uh, tin surface and again that five mil little vertical offset uh, for the uh, the machine control so it's quite handy it means you can as i said before you can create the subgrade tin surface for you the bottom surface do all the tin to tin volumes that you're after and then come back later on and apply the um, the, uh, the tri mesh values for you so again for the other side of the road if you are looking at the different pavement types you've got the the option to to copy uh across the pavement and you've also got the option to take into account our the naming convention or the or the actual descriptor here we've set this up so we've got three or four different ones lane one lane two lane three lane four so if i use the attribute there i can pick that i can see i've got a lane one lane two so the actual descriptor itself uh, has defined what they are uh, so you've got the the, the choice uh, between either individually uh, um, aligning your pavement profiles or having the copy command to go straight through so just to sum up again under the new pavement manager you have total control over a number of layers you want uh, you can define and copy uh, inside of the grid and duplicate you also have total control over the any of the attribute information that you wish to group together in this case here under BIM pavement uh, information about the the, the pavement and uh, uh, different attributes for every single layer so when you go under the BIM export IFC so this is where you, you pick your data you go under attributes say what's my IFC attribute tree and I would type in BIM so when you export the data this is what you're going to end up with so in, out in the IFC you then can pick on your pavement profiles and you have the the um, uh, in this case here the MetaConnects ones that I've set up a tab for that and the standard 12d pavement one so again we've got the pavement type information all, all at, the, at your fingertips in the in the IFC so I'd like to thank you all for attending today and um, uh, I look forward to you uh, experiencing using the uh, pavement manager <laughs>